Translation you know is synthesis of protein. When I was explaining you central dogma, I had told you how DNA inside the nucleus forms the RNA and how RNA codes for protein and the expression of uh, DNA is always in the form of a protein. So protein synthesis, suppose this is a cell. Suppose this is a cell, this is the nucleus, these are the nuclear pores. Now DNA inside the cell by means of transcription produces mRNA. This mRNA leaves the nucleus through the nucleo, nuclear pores. Ribosomes are made up of two subunits. Amino acids are present in the cytoplasm. These are suppose these are the amino acids. Different amino acids, 20 amino acids uh, which are essential for protein synthesis lie in the cytoplasm. This is a ribosome. Ribosomes can lie freely in the cytoplasm or they can be attached to um, the endoplasmic reticulum. Now this mRNA after it comes to the cytoplasm attaches itself to the through the groove to the ribosomes. Now if we see the structure of a ribosome these are two subunits this is the groove you know that mRNA let us say this is mRNA it has got codons like this there are two sites in the ribosome two sites in the ribosome one site is called the A site the other site is called the P site A stands for amino acyl site and the P stands for peptidyl peptidyl site now for a protein synthesis to occur the first step is activation of the amino acids these amino acids that are present in the cytoplasm are present in the form of an inactive uh, form they are inactive amino acids. So the first step is to convert these inactive amino acids to active amino acids. And this is done by enzyme amino acyl synthetase. And once the amino acid becomes active, this utilizes ATP. Once this gets active, it attaches to a transfer RNA molecule. Transfer RNA molecules, these tRNA molecules are specific for each amino acid. So if there are 20 amino acids, there are 20 kinds of transfer RNAs also in the cytoplasm. Actually, each transfer RNA is a clover leaf structure like this. This is, it has three unpaired nucleotide sequences here, which are called anticodon. And three here are called the codon. So, this pairing will take place. So, for each codon, there is a specific transfer RNA. This is the concept that you have to understand. Now, in protein synthesis or in translation, there are basically four steps. First step is initiation. Where the amino acid will be made active and it will attach to a specific RNA or transfer RNA molecule. Second step is peptide bond formation. And 
and chain elongation. By formation of peptide bonds, the chain of polypeptide will in, uh, uh, elongate. One amino acid forms a peptide bond with the second, forms a peptide bond with the third. That's how these are peptide bonds. And that's how after peptide bond formation, the chain will elongate. The third step is termination. That is end of chain formation. And that I told you initiation is with the start codon AUG. And for termination we had seen there are three codons UAA, UAG and UGA. These are the stop codons. So this is the start codon. And this codon codes for methionine. In prokaryotes, it codes for, uh, suppose we are talking of prokaryotes, it codes for formyl methionine. You have to remember these things. AUG is the start codon which codes for amino acid methionine and in prokaryotes it codes for formyl methionine. These are the stop codons and these do not code for any amino acid. They do not code for any amino acid. And the fourth step is post-translational processing. That is after protein synthesis has taken place, the processing that will occur to give a final structure to the protein that is produced. That is post-translational processing which occurs in the endoplasmic reticulum in the Golgi complex where the primary structure of the protein is then converted into secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure that is particular kind of folding, formation of bonds between them to result in the formation of the active protein that is formed because after these three steps the polypeptide chain or the protein that is formed is not active unless it undergoes post-translational processing in which it will become active and will attain a certain um, configuration, a certain structure. Now coming to initiation. I told you amino acids that are present in the cytoplasm are in inactive form. They have to be first activated and then that active amino acid is going to be carried by transfer amino acid first to the A site. First to the amino acyl site where the active amino acid will um, come. This will then transfer, will be transferred to the peptidyl site. Now you know amino, what is the structure of amino acid? Amino acid has a carboxylic group. Suppose this is the R group and has an amino group. This is the structure of an amino acid. Now, suppose this is the start codon AUG. So here the transfer RNA that will carry the amino acid methionine with anticodon here will carry the amino acid methionine and in case of Prokaryotes, it is formal methionine. Why formal methionine? So that this amino group is blocked. Formal group is present here and the, this amino group will be blocked. So the reaction will be between the carboxylic group of the first amino acid with the amino group of the second amino acid. Now a molecule of water will be removed and this is what is a peptide bond which will be formed. This is formal group here. Wait, I will just explain. This is the second uh, step peptide bond formation which is taking place here. Let us write the structure again. This is the amino group. 
this is the carboxyl group a boxylic group of first amino acid now the second amino acid this is the nh amino group second h this then ch alkyl group and carboxylic group of the second amino acid now reaction takes place and a molecule of water is removed when this molecule of water is removed we have a co nh bond this is the second amino acid and this is the amino group and the formal group for formal methionine so this bond here removal of water results in the formation of a bond this bond is called a peptide bond so this is the start codon so amino acid methionine the next amino acid will be carried by the next transfer rna this is the anti codon this matching will take place and the amino group of the second amino acid this one will attack the carboxylic group of the first amino acid and that's how a molecule of water will be removed and a bond will be formed and once the bond is formed this amino acid move this amino acid will move out the polypeptide chain will come out the second amino acid will move to the p site and here for this two molecules of uh, gtp and one molecule of atp are utilized for the formation of peptide bond that is and the enzyme used is peptidyl transferase which will then transfer the amino acid um, from a site to p site and the next will come on the a site that's how bond formation will take place and it will keep moving out and the chain will be elongated so this is the process of protein synthesis or translation i have tried to explain it to you i will read it once um, for you to understand to make it clear and then after that you go through the book all all this what i have explained to you is also mentioned very clearly in your textbooks so i am reading about protein synthesis i will go slow you follow each step what i have explained you will understand since this is something which you are doing for the first time that's why i am doing it again with you translation is protein synthesis polymerization of amino acids to form the polypeptide chains is termed as translation translation takes place in cell cytoplasm various amino acids get arranged by means of peptide bonds in sequential manner according to the information which is provided by the messenger rna and they form the polypeptide chain this process takes place in ribosomes and therefore ribosomes are called protein factories of the cell there are 20 different types of amino acids but amino acids that can be joined together in a number of ways and can give rise to millions of proteins the mechanism or steps for translation involves four sub processes first is initiation second is peptide bond formation and chain elongation third is termination and fourth is post translational processing initiation initiation is activation of amino acid and transfer of the activated amino acid to the transfer rna there are 20 amino acids in the cytoplasm so there are at least 20 kinds of transfer rna 
one for each kind of amino acid. Amino acids are present in an inactive state. Their activation by ATP and transport to ribosomes by transfer RNA is essential for protein synthesis. There are 20 types of enzymes called amino acyl synthetase which help to activate amino acids and facilitate their binding with the transfer RNA. Once the amino acids have become attached to their respective transfer RNAs, they diffuse to the ribosomes where protein synthesis actually occurs. Ribosomes consist of two subunits, a larger and a smaller one and are composed up of ribosomal RNA. The messenger RNA is threaded through the groove between the two subunits of the ribosomes. Ribosomes have two sites for binding amino acyl transfer RNA. First site is called the A site or the amino acyl site and the second site is called the P site or the peptidyl site. Site A serves to receive a fresh charged transfer RNA. At this site, the anticodons of the transfer RNA are matched with the codons of the messenger RNA. When the matching is found correct, the transfer RNA is then passed on to the P site, what I told you here. Then second step is peptide bond formation and chain elongation. The initiation of polypeptide chain is brought about by amino acid methionine. In prokaryotes, formulated methionine initiates the process instead of ordinary methionine. Since in protein synthesis, the peptide chain always grows in a sequence from the free terminal amino group towards the carboxyl group, the function of formal methionine transfer RNA is to ensure that proteins are synthesized in that direction. If formal methionine transfer RNA, the amino acid group is blocked by the formal group, leaving only the carboxylic group available to react with the amino group of the second amino acid. Then elongation of the peptide chain will take place. A second transfer RNA, which is charged with an appropriate amino acid, now forms hydrogen bonds with the second codon on the messenger RNA at the A site of the ribosome. The A site remains very close to the P site. The amino group of amino acyl transfer RNA at A site carries a nucleophilic attack on the carboxylic group of the peptidyl tRNA at the P site. The reaction is catalyzed by peptidyl transferase and a peptide bond is formed. It requires 1 ATP and 2 GTP molecules. During peptide bond formation, the amino acyl bond formed between the transfer RNA <clears throat> and peptidyl amino acid at the P site is dissociated. The free transfer RNA at P site is now released and the P site becomes vacant. Then the third step is termination. Termination signal is provided by any of the termination codons or we also call them stop codons or nonsense codons because they do not code for any amino acid. When these codons reach the A site, they provide a signal for termination of protein synthesis. And finally, the polypeptide chain gets released. After the release of the polypeptide chain, the two ribosomal units also get separated. Finally, the last step is post-translational processing. The polypeptide chain which is formed is not functional unless it undergoes post-translational changes that will occur in the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi 
complex that is giving a final structure to the protein molecule that has been synthesized or the gene that has been expressed in the form of a protein. So this is about translation. With this, I finish today's class. Read from the book and go through my lecture. Everything will become very clear to you. That's all. Take care.